4 or 5 p.m. on Monday, July 18th, 2024, before the commission is the Lazarus Department. It is an amazing um, commissioner ever seen it pending by Zoom. Uh, Commissioner Strigo and Chairman Koch are and Megan are present, and Commissioner uh, Demers is not. Um, it's, you know you're going to take up. You're not going to pick me. That's all right. I'm good. It's, yeah, it's, it's over I'm sorry. I need to okay. do that. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, it wasn't too much anyway. Um, are there any modifications to the agenda? And I could also note that Stu Arnold um, is here. Um, is there a motion to approve the agenda? I move to approve the agenda. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. That is approved. Um, and we have minutes from our last meeting for the meeting of June 17th, 2024. Uh, is there a motion to approve the minutes? We need to approve the minutes. Second. Any discussion? Uh, all in favor? Aye. Michael? Aye. Okay. <laughs> uh, so I don't know what volume I'm on, but I'll yell. <laughs> uh, and uh, the next item on the agenda is public comment, and we have some from the public. <clears throat> Would you care to make some comments, Sue? Sure. <laughs> what was that? This whole this panel, yeah. 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 They got you. Mm -hmm. well, uh, I just wanted to thank the public collector for listening to what we talked about last month, multiple items. We still don't have any weight folks. You know, just, um, getting through the storm is what I want to just give you a quick wrap up. I don't want to spend a lot of time there, but I did see you have dams on the agenda. Curious to know if that includes. Caspian stand that's, that can sit till maybe five or ten, five, five or five or ten or five. That you get to talk about Caspian coach or somewhere in that one. I'd love to hear what you're having on. So, yeah, so we uh, we agreed on opening the rear to the previous setting where it was after uh, 2019 April. Um, and then after the flood event last year, it was set with a smaller rear opening. Mm -hmm. um, after a few weeks, Brian and I finally got that together um, and we made that happen. So that puts us at a 13 inch um, screw height for the surfaces of the, of the weir. Uh, I, if you look at the screw twists. Um, and so we got there, um, but since we were getting more saturated and more saturated by rain. That's like the year before, I made a special request to uh, do that green to make a weir opening. Like, let's get it up full before the storm. Um, well, the you know, oil was pretty dry. Um, and you, the Harvard Blacker came out in three different times to give us a, basically four more inches, which was great. Um, for that little dry spell and the, uh, the extra opening, we did drop the lake that well and down about seven inches from 14 inches above the spillway to our goal of seven. Um, and uh, so we were we were close to our goal when we got the the bureau and the girl um hurricane went left over. Uh, we had six inches of rain in Greensboro in about a little less than 24 hour period. Uh, that rose so late about 22 inches, um, which was close to what our estimate was six times four is 24. Um, so we came pretty close to that. It was a good thing we got some water out. Uh, we were still about eight inches at the high point. We we're still about, I think, seven or eight inches from reaching the dam. Um, so that was good. So it was 10 inches lower than a year ago when we breached the dam by four inches. Um, so I just want to thank you all for the response. Um, I 
we talked about the possibility of opening it more fully when we go on oil is a little, uh, a little less water in it. Um, you don't want to dump any more water in the oil now. It looks like it's headed in the right direction when the water spill today. Um, but we'd like to leave the weir where it is uh, until we get to our average. Um, so our average for block is we're, we're still 21 inches over the spillway, so we've got two more inches to drop. On August uh, 1st, that's only two weeks away. Um, in, in best conditions, we might spill an inch a day. Um, and uh, so it could possibly get down by then to um, seven inches, but that with some rain, unlikely. Um, but so it may be first of all, September when we hit. Our average then is just a little bit less on the spillway of two inches. So we have data as to what the eight year average is. We'd love to, you know, manage it closer to the average than the experience. And I would just say, just um, to being very kind, um, because no one at uh, Harvard Electric actually knows the historic measurement regime. Like when we went out three times, I'm just being very kind to thank us for doing that because we didn't know how much to go each time. We didn't really want. Um, because the only person who knew that doesn't work at Hardwick Electric anymore, yeah. other than you, obviously. Um, and then we're doing the batch at the state. Um, while the state's certainly telling the association, like, just have them open that. On the other hand, we're getting told to, like, we have to talk to everybody downstream before we open it at all. And I know that you, you want us to be careful about yeah. that, too. So there's a there's a bit of a dance. Um, and I think that the last piece of it will get tricky, and I'm totally on board. We're going to leave it open. But let me just say that first. And then, but the state doesn't want us to, want us to necessarily manage it kind of month to month the historic norms. They want it to be static, basically. Um, so at some point, they're going to push back right now because of all the rain and the flood. But Ben Green absolutely said, you do what you got to do. But he did say, you go talk to everyone downstream first every single time, which obviously we couldn't do. Yeah, so right. we just opened it anyway. But just know that on the state side, that's what they're holding that's over our head. If we yeah. do it too much and somebody downstream has a problem, the state's going to hold us to account. Okay. Um, just to be aware. And just to finish the thought, thank you for being patient with us. Because I know that we were doing it less each time than you all would have loved. So we appreciate your forbearance with us while we learn. Mm -hmm. We're, yeah, we're in this game that's going to be ever changing. That's what um, we celebrate change because um, it's coming. Um, so we're we're just um, yeah. So if we can team together as we did, that's going to be the win win. Um, and and as we see towards the future, adjustments to the rear structure itself could add to a, a lessening of this thirty five inch high and low spread. If we can find a way to make that shower um, yeah. in and in, in extreme by future possibilities. Yep. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I didn't know you were going to be here, but since you're here, um, what's the water quality right now? So we tested it Thursday morning after the rain was still sort of coming down, but it was pretty much that storm was over. Um, and that results just got them this morning. So the public beach is 53 most part most probable um, like organisms per um, 100 milliliters. So that's the it's okay. like parts per million, but yeah. you know, same sort of thing. Um, the lake average um, based on we never I never moved any E. coli test prior to after last year's rain mm -hmm. event. And which we tested three times last year. This is the third time we tested this year. Um, they normally in single digits, um, where uh, zero is drinking water, uh, one to ten is low risk for drinking, and anything ten, ten upwards in the middle, same double digits. Um, some states, a hundred is max to close. Vermont is two hundred thirty-five to close a beach. Um, other states are three hundred fifty. So, um, so somewhere between a hundred and yeah, and above is, is determined less swimmable. Um, drinkability ends more in the teens and 20s. Um, so I mean, our health officers, based upon 
that put out notice to be cautionary. They put that out right away. So what is the number that was going on? E. coli X 53 at the beach. I tested it's it. Shocking. It's shocking it's, that you got low, honestly. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Um, it was, we said that's a lot higher than last year. Yep. Um, so the, we did have an abnormality at the close of each on it when we retested it. It, was, it, it. it must have been some kind of lab error. Um, this batch we did also has one that's way out of whack. So I think it's a lab error. So we hit the left, rest of the lake is. Another spot was 60, and another spot of Highland Lodge was only three. Um, so the lakes in some blocks right now, the turbidity has gone from very turbid Thursday, Friday to flaring on Saturday, Sunday. Today, when I look at the water from my dock, it's way, I can see, but I couldn't see two days ago. Um, yeah, so it's normally um, we see about eight to nine meter clarity in our lake this time of year. Um, some of your other months where we see 12 and 13, um, there's sometimes when it's six and eight. So, a lot of times it's not the severity of the storm that really pushes E. coli, but how long since the last storm. Mm -hmm. But what you're really getting is that first flush of all the animal waste in the woods, right? And everything else. Yeah. Um, if, if manure can spread or whatever, yeah. it's that first flush. We had a pretty big storm like a week before that, if you recall, and not a long duration, but yeah. we had like a day of rain. And so the lake it, come up, the lake was coming up. Whatever was in there at all, it was the point. So, so we didn't test them. I tested yep. before July 4th. Yep. Um, and it was after a more drier period of yep. June. Yep. That's the guy. There's been a lot on Facebook. There's a group, a harvest group on, yep. on Facebook, and a lot of people were talking about the various lakes and ponds, and there were questions about casting. Yep. So I'm um, very good for people to question. And, Field of lots of calls. So it's safe for people to swim in here. It is. It's been safe all along. Um, it's just now we know more and we'll hopefully see it improve. Out of respect for you, this week, would you like to change the order of the agenda? Sure. And then the rest of the night. Do you all mind? Okay. I've been in the hall. It's a very wonderful location. Um, location. So, you know, we put this on the agenda not for action because honestly, this is something I think we need to think about for a good long period of time and make some plans about. Um, this came up because we got a notice from, I believe it was from all the cities and towns telling us that basically come the end of the year, um, any dams that are rated for um, will no longer be insured for downstream liability. Um, and so then I started looking at you know, how many of our dams are rated for, and almost all of them are in Mecca. Um, and I looked at well, what's it take for it not to be rated for, and it's a whole lot of hydraulic analysis and improvements. And honestly, the, you know, a dam like Caspian, the hydraulic improvements, I'm not sure how you fix them, honestly, because it is what it is, right? Um, so, you know, could you ever get out of being poor? Maybe, but it's not a clear path to it. Um, and, you know, so then the question for you all to contemplate, and this is not, again, not to be reactionary and not to suggest an answer, but, you know, all of these, all these dams other than the Wolfpit Dam were likely acquired by public electric, like so many other utilities, um, not to generate electricity directly, but to release water down the Lenoir for those dams on the Lenoir. That's what they were, that was the function and why an electric department owns them. I don't know that for every dam, including Caspian, but generally speaking in Vermont, that's what they are. So Hardwick owns all of these assets um, uh, that have no electric function anymore. Um, so while everyone's in favor of keeping cash base in other towns, you know, is it appropriate to use local ratepayer money to do this? Um, that's really the question, but particularly when now you're being told you're uninsurable and you're now taking on heightened risk. Couple that with the fact that this year there was a serious, serious drive in the legislature to change the, the status of liability from general liability, which it is today, which means you make your best efforts and as long as you are a good actor, you're not liable for downstream engineer speak for a legal firm <laughs> to strict liability. The strict liability, which is it was described in the legislature was no matter what the cause, even an act of God, um, you, if it fails, you're going to be held liable for every damage from here to Lake Champlain um, for the water you release. 
Um, I was one of the people that testified in opposition to that and got it thrown out this year uh, in my role more so. Um, I will tell you that the advocacy, group, advocacy groups on that are um, licking their wounds and getting ready. And at some point, they'll probably win um, that battle. So then not only will we be uninsurable, we'll have a strict liability. So the question that that calls to, and I'm not trying to suggest the answer to that question, because again, you'll likely have a new manager by then, but I do think you need to think about is, should you want to hold on to these assets or should you want to transform to an association or talk to the communities that actually have them and gain the tax benefits from having these wonderful facilities? So this is not anti anything that's going on. I mean, be really clear. And I think that should be hard to collect its perspective. But the, the view of in this changing liable um, scenario we're in, the view of having electric ratepayers on the hook for non-electric assets, um, I think you got to ask yourself that question going forward. Um, so that's really what I wanted to lay out. And it's true of, again, I think MACDO is the one that is uh, that made it to fair status. Um, the rest of them are all poor. Um, so end of the year, we don't have any bills. Yeah, what's the desired outcome from the advocacy to change the liability status? But they they really weren't trying to come after um, the, 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 the electric generating dam owners because they know that we're required by the state to inspect them. Or something in my case, I'm required by FERC to inspect them. So they know that there's a regular regime that just got caught up in the way they wrote it. They're trying to get at these. Um, mostly, they're not even really after ones like you're talking about. So it's even possible in the legislature, an argument to carve off municipally owned dams might succeed. They're really after the cut through private dams that a lot of the advocates want to see the dams go away. Um, and so they feel like if you twist, twist the knife okay. on strict liability, yep. people will feel like they just have to breach the dams and make them go away. Yep. Um, and they believe that will result in better water quality in Vermont, which it will not, but that's what they believe. Who, who, who's pushing for, 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 for the strict liability standard? It's mostly been in my mind. Let me see. You thinking that it's going to improve water quality? Yes. So, now, and they have a strong voice in my period. Right? No, I, so, I, I, um, And I'd say, I don't know how the non-electric generating dams will fare in this that even municipally own, because while the state oversees us to some extent, right? They make us occasionally do an inspection of, but then we, you know, what the advocates will say is, so you're listed poor, you're listed poor for 20 years in a row, who makes makes you do anything? And we're reluctant to do a whole heck of a lot. I say we, it could be any um electric utility that owns a non-generating dam because. What money are we spending? Is it appropriate to spend electric ratepayer money? Not really. It, can you spend a little bit? And the PUC is not going to look unless somebody complains. And if they do, then it's going to be deemed non prudent by the PUC and, you know, or could be. They may not unless they get yeah. told it. Um, maybe they didn't say yes. We still have to go through the cycle, right? And, and go through the, the review. So it's really a better not stop, Josh, if you think about it. Like we're, to be where we sit is hard to collect it with these. You have a whole lot of risk. We might be allowed to use some um, uh, ratepayer money, even if it doesn't seem right to have the electric ratepayers pay for these things. Um, uh, but you're you're at risk when you do. Um, and everything on the risk setting side from insurance to the legislature is making it harder, not easier. So. I don't know where that lands you at the end of an evaluation, but I think, you know, evaluating that in the coming six to 12 months ought to be on the table. Now, I would assume that the FCT won't ensure it. Nobody else is going to. You might, like um, in, in Morrisville, we don't get our downstream liability from the LCT. We get it from a group called PERMA, which I don't know what that stands for. It's another public entity. It's a new and wide one. Um, and right now, they've not sent out a notice that says we're going to drop you. Um, maybe they're a year behind the LCP. I don't know, right? Is that, is that something we should be looking at? We could definitely look at sources of We could definitely look at PERMA. I think it's URMA is what I think it but is. But even insurance is going to have cap on liability. Sure. And yeah, of course. And so if you go to strict liability, you're going to have seat. Um, well, yeah, strict, strict, strict liability is not best. Yeah. 
Um, it's crazy, but they're very, I wouldn't be surprised if it it's, passes. It's, in the it's a year. risk allocation mechanism, but why? It, it's it's peculiar that it's being applied to this. It's very peculiar. I agree with you. Uh, and, I mean, are there large private things? They're not so much after big dams. They're after all these little ones because they see those as, you know, the purpose for the dam is gone and we should prioritize water quality and get rid of the rest of them failing and creating all kinds of mess that we have to then clean up. And um, so, and it changes things from a cold river to a warm river fishery. And there's environmental groups that think we should always want to go back to the original yeah, fishery type. And so there's all these things. There, when you peel this onion, you'll find no end of arguments why the dam should all go, right? Um, and uh, again, it doesn't mean it should. It doesn't mean we shouldn't keep owning them. It just, I do think it means we should evaluate you know, the risk portfolio. And then I think, it's, I think that's right. And I guess the question is how and when do we start that process? No. I think with what we have on our plate between now and when you have a new manager, I don't think you you can't fit it right now. The things we're trying to solve in, in my short time here, I'm not to just pass the buck, but honestly, I think I gotta pass the buck on that one. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and uh, and then we can probably someone at the LCP that is knowledgeable of why what they felt pushed them to make this decision and where they see the, the sort of key cards leaving. We might even be able to get Ben Green from the state dam safety program up here to talk to us about, because I did mention him. He said, so you know now that the insurance industry is using your ratings, even if they're just that you need a hydraulic capacity study as a reason to disinsure us. And he was not aware of that. Well, um, well yeah, that's what I'm wondering. You know. is, is, there, is there something we can do through the state um, either to change how the dams are rated? Yeah. Or to for the state to have an insurance fund or pool that yeah, um, that, that that dam owners can yeah. buy into. Which may be the other way to address this, which is to try to get the OCP or some other more statewide entity to evaluate the path forward on these, not just for hybrid, but for all kind of municipal dams. But we're just we're there has to be. 20 other municipal entities who got this notice who are all sitting around going, what do we do with these dams now? We're not the only one, right? So um, and your association might be attached to other associations thinking about the same things too, right? Yeah. Um, so that's really the purpose tonight is to kind of raise the flag and say, you know, we already had some liability and now things just change. You know? Well, and it, it's good because it gets a public dialogue and that's been the public meeting that Thing, but it would be really good to check right now when I'm going to come to the line. I think the sentiment of the board is, as, as it expressed, that having assets that are related to our mission um, in our view doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. And if exiting those assets can actually benefit our great thinkers, then we should be new. Okay. And so it, it really sets up if, if you buy that, I don't know when you buy that test to make sure that's our new. Then it sets up how do we how do we advance that? What's the right process and procedure? And I don't know that we're ready yet. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good for you, Stu. I think it's a good thing for you with your group to go back and just test your local yeah brain for our options. I know that we have talked about you know, how would, would it benefit the association to have the ownership of the dam, mm -hmm. um, understanding we have future liability and, right. and it could be, it could be a deep if it's going to go from general to spirit. But, mm -hmm. uh, but on the other hand, um, I think we have more um, personal need of the asset than Part of the electric bill, right? So, yeah. so there's a demo. We, we, would, we would, in theory, love to have that to say, okay, then we can work with the state on coming up with a plan yeah. to manage the, the rate flow. We control the, the rear and we um, make sure that it's and that it needs to be safe. And we may need to raise some funds to see if we can take it from a forward or fair to that. 
or do something in collaboration with the town and for Yeah, so, so, yeah. so okay. not, and you know, I know that the beach is still desirable by cargo. Um, whether that be spun off or is it all in one or well, the beach isn't desirable for a hard to collect. Okay. I think our view is that it's probably desirable for the town for the, in the community, yeah, and not yeah, just yeah, the right. So today we have a joint beach committee and yeah. we, we yeah. share those common expenses. That's a wonderful community. Whenever communities can share in some of the, the, the good stuff, um, we used to share in police. So, uh, you know, be nice to see that come back again. So we can have a good service with the sheriff's office. Um, but it's, I, I love for collectiveness. Um, and the more we can do with the Hardwood Health Center, the Hardwood Rescue, that, that, uh, that we, we can help with those expenses. Uh, it's those community. I would also just say, just so you have it in your head, is when, when you get ready for this conversation, um, you know, Vepsa has a, a lobby a lobby firm that works for them in the building. So, you know, getting their sense of, um, you know, how the legislature might play out on this matter of strict liability. And, you know, they're the ones actually hearing the dialogue inside the building all the time. And are, they're always in touch with all the advocates on every side of the mission. That's their job, right? So how hard are they coming at this the next session? My gut is that, you know, they look their wounds and they're coming back. Um, but, you know, uh, I'm an engineer. <laughs> it sounds like there's that, not. That reminds me when I to say I'm not an engineer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, but they do have, and they can make, we could probably call in, but Jamie, you know, they've got a, that, that, that's their job is to work these issues on behalf of EPSA, and you're a member of EPSA. So it's a benefit you can get from that to hear directly from them. Right. Um, am I correct that there's not a material difference in a dam that is owned by the municipality versus municipal utility? I think they're both municipal dams. Is, yeah. So, um, the difference is we might be seen as having, um, I don't know which way to apply. Because we have a rate base, I don't know if. Which would be seen as having deeper pockets in this salary or in what? I would be worried. I would be worried that if that were being assessed in Mark Gillier, it might be assessed in a political sentiment. Yeah. And the political sentiment would be, oh, it's not fair to put that burden on the hand because of the situation. Yeah. But they so often people <laughs> imagine that these utilities are profit making businesses, they don't realize that they're just the way they are. Right. It's like people. And so, but I worry that that confusion that we run into all the time could exist to make okay. it distinguish between exactly right. And, you know, it's the same people with unpredictable distribution all of that. <laughs> yeah, and the distribution would be huge. It would be basically the downstream people would be compensated with the expense. So yeah, it's absurd. Yeah, no, it, it, that's why this whole strict liability regime does not. But anyway, um, in answer to your question about you know what the view of the the board is, I mean we could have a policy about. Uh, you know, our intention is to be any asset to the That would be um, an interesting motion that we, we that we we want to initiate the process to evaluate and to evaluate the sorts of what assets we have before the mission. That what is that substantive in there? I think so. I move to start a process to evaluate assets held by the electric department, particularly those assets for the real estate and food games that do not contribute to our mission of providing reliable low cost electricity. That those assets should be evaluated for disposal to benefit patients. 
I would be interested in evaluating all that because it's not just the program. Maybe I should use a different word. Yeah. What do you interpret this one? I, I was going to say, I don't understand how you what the problem was. With, so what else would you do? Then? Would it transfer to a different entity? We just put all of Okay. Yes. Disposal is taking it off of their yep. books. Great. Yeah, it is being given away. Yep. Yeah. Because they order benefit of money. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. But for example, if the town retained it, I don't know, would that benefit that's our still, that's, that's still that's still disposal by the way. Okay. We're, we're not speaking for the town. We're yep. speaking for okay. the and yeah, disposal is is of an asset mm -hmm. is just transferring it, getting rid of it no longer only. Mm -hmm. So that's why I meant it in a new Yeah, no, I'm so, not referencing these things. It's not like it doesn't really go to how you would dispose mm -hmm. of it, to whom mm -hmm. or when or any of that. It's just, it's, it, it, it's not from your way. And, and I was assuming when I said benefit the label was just at the highest benefit of the label. So if there were three options and one of them. Okay. Yeah. Involve us receiving a larger amount of money. That would we be obligated, I think, to receive the money of some other form of benefit. I would imagine there would be consideration. I'd be interested yeah. in the value. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, yeah. 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 I think it's yeah. value. I, I don't. I. I think it's likely to be what you described, but I could envision situations where there may be some um, non-monetary. Things coming kind into of play where, sure. you know, it's, it's all things things like, yeah. Sure. So, I, I think it's, I think it's an evaluation, but I think, the, I think the point of the motion, and I think it's in the language of the motion, and that will have it when it all gets played back, <laughs> uh, it is that if we have assets that are not benefiting our case, that are not they don't have anything to do with generating electricity, you know, providing electrical service, uh, getting the power to our customers, whatever it is, you know, that that we need to look at that. And if there's if there's a way for those assets to benefit, it should be our policy to Michael. Hey, I wholeheartedly, I wholeheartedly agree with getting rid of them. Let's pay people to take. <laughs> Let's go to a vote. There's no question here. Let's just go to the vote. <laughs> Is there any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm sorry. I don't know if you'll see this on a future agenda somewhere. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I might miss it. So yeah. I would only take back at this time that I heard this motion uh, that you're reviewing your assets and there may be a future opportunity to be in a um, a bargaining of sorts yep. um, and change of ownership. And we can um, see who benefits and who, who is the liability in flood. Yeah, yeah. Not, that's getting to dollar values. Okay. 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 All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. May there be a breeze on your dock. <laughs> <laughs>
I, I think this is true, but my sense is that uh, they were received with really appreciation and uh, both of the of the focus on some of the facility issues and the rehire bonus, as you called it. Um, and I think with a uh, eye towards, you know, so it's been a long road, but to see if all the rest of those items actually come through, you know. So we're trying to make sure we get the get some quotes on replacement of the roof to you know, water dripping on them and you know, all these other things that are on the list and moving the truck issues. So it's not a skeptical eye back towards the commission. They heard clearly we told us to do it. They want to see management follow through, and we're slowly working on that. Um, and uh, but overall, I think the message and Beth should definitely weigh in because she's there at least this past week. She's been there more than me. Um, but I think it was genuinely, genuinely appreciated, and right. hopefully gets people to hang on through the transition. But I, I would ask so. you please do weigh in. Um, I really haven't heard much feedback since I've been there. I know when uh, he made the announcement about it, I did chime in to say. You know, I recognize the the difference. I've seen. I recognize the difference in the um, energy in the office. And I said I I conveyed to them that even though there hasn't been much interaction with the board, that the board truly is sincerely concerned for them, and they want to do what's the best for sure. HED as well as them. So, I had a, 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 the most talking Sierra the other day, um, and and. Uh, Thanks for the question. Yeah. Um, She's super. It, it's uh, it's great. It, it is mm -hmm. terrific. And I think there are people are noticing yep. this, this information that people can use, the information about outages, and just everything. We, we've still got some more yep. boxes we can check off, but we're working on it. Yep. It's better. It's more than what it was. Infinite. Hopefully that will get most, hopefully at least hopefully everybody at least most everybody to hang in to the end of the year to see the new person arrive and and see the continuation of the change and so that that's the hope so I just wanted to give you an update that it seems to have done what we hoped it would do at least in the short term. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, before we go on to the next agenda item, I just it just took me that when I went through who was here, I didn't say that Scott and Jeff were here. <laughs> there you go. So that should be in there. You know, <laughs> here. Like, like, you are here. I got it. Um, so, um, okay. So the next item is the IR proof process. Thank you. It, it, it was it was a really helpful piece that we heard Scott. Yeah. Um, I would just offer, I'm not going to read the memo to you, but what I just said would say, because I'm really interested if you have questions about it, um, you know, to me, it seems like no commissioner said or trustees hardly have ever seen these things. Um, and probably the most important policy document that the organization um, puts out and is required to put out. It's not like you have an option on this. You have to right. do it every three years and you have to look 30 years every three years and you have to agree to a three year work plan every three years. Um, and frankly, at your, the budgets that you approve, which in most organizations that don't have to do an IRP, is probably the most important policy document, um, largely are a function of the IRP. Like, we right. have to do the stuff that's in it. Right. So, if, if you aren't aware of it every step of the way, and then it gets submitted to the state, your budgets are going to get driven by it, whether you like it or not. Well, it's too late for you to weigh in when you have the budget document in front of you, honestly. So, in terms of that, you're speaking to the converter. Yes. Because, I mean, one of, one of the sources of dissatisfaction in the past was that the IRP came out and we didn't know it was coming out. We had no input into it. We never saw a draft. We were doing discussions. And so we need a process where, you know, it's not that we have all the expertise that needs to come to bear on it, but we need to be involved in that process. And I think the way you do that, I mean, at least the way I did it more so, and I think the trustees there will tell you that it worked for them. The problem is, you know, it gets hard because DEPSA is our contractor, and they're doing like five of these at once. Yep. So things get pressure point, and then they go slow for a while, and then they get pressure point. So to take take that out of creating urgency here, what I did more so, just trying to hit each of this, uh, a section or two, Every four to six weeks, you know, every meeting with TPU and in the in the high park example, 
and walk you through. So what is the new renewable energy standard going to mean here? So basically, we talk through all of that state policy. And yeah, it's going to trickle down into the IRP. But by the time the draft IRP shows up, you're already familiar with, with the directions that are going to be in there. And you kind of had some say about it. It's a little vague at the beginning, but it tightens up when it finally comes. And then you talk about rate forecasting. You know, what, is it, what does that mean in a low growth and a high growth um, a scenario? And, um, and what are the investments that go with a high growth electrification scenario? And you, you talk to each of those moving parts, right? By the time you get the full document, it's kind of like, oh yeah, we, we heard about all this, yeah. right? Um, and that at least seemed to work well, Marshall. It doesn't mean it will here, but it seemed to work well there. It sounds like a good approach to me, and it sounds like we probably need to start. But I would agree. I think that makes sense. So I, I don't know what the first part that we should be talking about it, but I would, I certainly would defer to you, but yeah. I would think that the next board meeting we should start getting educated. I think the res bill might be a good place to start only because, you know, just passed and, yeah. and VEPS has now been able to get their arms around it, honestly. So sure. they can now, in fact, I was at a meeting today where they articulated it for the first time, um, what it really means. And they'll get better at that with each presentation at this yeah. point, right? So I think that's probably where we would start. And Ken's coming to the next meeting anyway, so he can actually help with it. Yeah. So that'd be good. And Scott, for all of those services you described, Covered under our that's a normal B. Yeah. But in under. Yep. Great. So there are projects, special projects that arise mm -hmm. that are cost, you know, value, you know, value add. Yep. You sign up for the project or you don't. Yep. Um, but this sort of stuff is all just, you know, supports the members and the general groups. Great. And do we need to confirm that extension that you even mentioned it? I think Mike mentioned it too. Um, so we just need to confirm that the extension is. Oh, the oh, extensions. Yeah, no, you don't have to do that. Okay. Vex has already applied for it. They've already said it in part because they're busy and in part because of the management change here. So, um, yeah, I need to go in. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 And they're, they're thinking when I talk to them, I know I, I think I wrote Q1. Vex is now thinking May by the time they get drafted, but it, it, it actually gets submitted. And that, the state won't have done that. Like, you know, perfectly fine. So, I have a question. Um, the last paragraph in the examiner is the point. Yep. I thought you were segwaying the anything else on the IRP process? Then the ventilator is the report. Roger. The um the last where you commented on next reading. Um was that the next HEB meeting or the next testing? The next HEB meeting. Oh, wonderful. You're going to come in and say, it's what we have to do with testing on the same thing. Yep. Yep. You have your AMI yeah. executive session yeah. that you cool. probably recall with sure. ESA. And then this transmission issue. And then we'll add this prior to discussion around the res yeah. for that. And, you know, I think one of the themes that you're exploring, I think, but I'm going to make it a I'm going to be a little more aggressive in the way I talk about it. Is when we have problems like AMI or we have challenges, and how do we handle custom upgrade challenges, or how do we handle that other issues that are going to be presented to us? Is there a way, in addition to getting all your expertise, which has been fabulous, can we get more out of that? Absolutely. Anytime yeah. we ask them, they'll give us yeah. their thoughts. Because we, yeah. Because we kind of, yeah. I think our fear is that we, as little mm -hmm. hardwood electric department, and we, with our little difficult topography, that we kind of run into obstacles. Either we don't have the bandwidth because they're small, yeah. or we've got some unique problems, yeah. and then we don't have the resources to think through it. Yeah. And so our right pay is suffering. Yeah, yeah. Because we don't find a practical way to do They're here anytime we've got an issue that we believe we want their expertise on. And just so you know, in Vexa land, where public electric is one of the biggest utilities. Yeah, the the problem problem with with AMI. we definitely have unique problems. Yeah. We're more like WEC in terms of AMI because of our little, yeah. you know, mountain exactly. across country world. But you know, but but I know. felt like the first Shot with that said, and an AMI solution was 
us being offered and often sometimes feeling force fed yep. the solution for everybody. Right. And the solution for everybody wasn't going to work for us. Okay. It would have if we could have pooled everybody and pooled all the money and contracted singly and then shared it in the expense. That would have been a great approach. Then we wouldn't have been suffering. But because we, they sort of had a, an approach that was an everybody approach, but then a cost because of you're on your own. <clears throat> There was no solution there. And, and if that's it, if you can find a way to go how past that, I think it would benefit us in AMI. It would benefit us in lots of yeah. Well, I think they're also on AMI. I think you can mention Scott that there are some benefits of AMI that we probably we were about. not. Yeah. They yeah. tried to sell on the real They tried to sell it on they tried to sell it on economic, which is not the reason we do AMI. The reason we do AMI is operations, um, operational improvement to be really blunt and fresh. It's gotta show up in the real metrics. So. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And uh, and the real difference, mostly the one size fits all works where hardware electric was at a disadvantage. Is because of the amount of strain is how many of these DMUs, which are basically mm -hmm. the fuel stations, you need it versus everybody else. Like you need three in North and you need something like 13. I forget the number. Yeah. It's a big number. If even that can balance out because when they first came to you, they were being really conservative about the state grant. And so they were showing like a 40% state grant. And now it's more like a 50% state right. grant now that we actually have the numbers. So right. the numbers are better. Right. The issue was they were trying to use the national assessment that essentially you put in AMI and get rid of your meter readers. Or if you only have one and you still have meters, you can't get rid of them. They may have a little more time to do other stuff and help more on hydro and this, that, and the other thing. But you don't really pay the salary of the meter reader. Well, that was, and that's that was exactly what we said when yeah. we. I didn't even Don't share the economics with, with the Marshall. They did the same thing I didn't share. I went in and, and told them about the operational improvements, and they were like, oh, yeah, that's great. Not the least of which is audit management, where within 30 seconds, we'll know every single place is out in less than 30 seconds. And in less than 15 seconds, we'll know when they're back on. We won't have to wait for the fall. We have a big screen up in our front office. <laughs> And people will still call and say, yep, you're out, aren't you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and when people call because they live in Connecticut and they got a blank on their security system, we'll just say, no, you have power. Mm -hmm. We're not going to go check your security system for you. You have power. You know, so there's a lot of things like that that are just wonderful. Voltage testing is great right. kind of thing. So. Do you have voltage voltage system? You sure do. I put in a chain. Yep. And a couple of times when the voltage was down, like it's 90. Yep. And the nice thing is, anytime we want to push a button, we can find out line by line what the voltage is. And then we can run it as many times as we want. And we can go out and start adding you know, regulators and whatever else we need to to resolve that issue. If it's that bad, we can increase the wire size, right? And uh, I'm not sure. I was shocked when I saw how long. It'll also tell us when we should say no to more solar online in the short term without then helping to invest in additional improvements. Uh, but and, and we're, that's a reason we are allowed to say right now this line just can't handle anymore because we screwing up everybody else's voltage. You know, when you add too much solar on it. And right now we don't know. Could I, could I ask a question? Um, it's sort of a general answer to the question, so I'll see you over there. <laughs> more right. related to the, the long term thing. That is, um, the projections of electrification yep. seem so far to be based on uh, adoption rates yep. and implementation rates of new technology. And Unless there's some government money, taxpayer money that's directed at our population, it would seem to me that our population almost will last. Will. We're going to hold on to gas power here for a long time. We're not going to have our homeowners not going to have the money for changing their heating systems. So that 
then that leads to well, what's the increase in demand going to really be in our among our ratepayers as compared to more affluent areas? Is that I mean, so that will definitely be in the IRP, and the key thing will be, and we should all weigh in on this, you know, uh, which is will, will be required to model at least two scenarios um, of, of uh, growth rate, one of which is the status quo, so we can zero and a half percent a year, which was in for 25 years. Um, it will at least require then you to look at one that includes some level of electrification. Um, because the state's been pushing this as if it, you know it's full war, um, in Northville, we decided for tactical reasons and strategy reasons to model 100% to show the state exactly how much cost it would be if they actually got what they wanted. Um, Belco went more middle of the road and said, let's look at 60%. And they're they need to invest something like $2 billion on the transmission system at 60%. Um, at, by the way, the 100% we were in the 15 million on our little local utility in North Shore, so non trivial money. Um, <laughs> but but having that dial, yes, you'll lag, and I think there's two critical dates to remember um, in terms of when will people not be able to lag. Um, the first is already adopted, which is in 2035, it becomes illegal in Vermont to sell a new vehicle with combustion engine. That was passed two years ago. Even even a hybrid, even though. I believe it's any combustion engine, but I could be wrong about that. That's what I believe. The second thing is, you probably recall two years ago, the legislature passed what's called the Clean Heat Standard. And then it went to a full year this past year of study committee. And then next year, it goes back to the final adoption to the legislature. The Clean Heat Standard that the advocates want um, says all home heating, cooling, hot water, and personal transport shall be electrified. Well, that's likely what's going to go back to the legislature. If they adopt that, they will then put dates to those things. So when will it become illegal to put a propane heater in your house in new construction as a first step? You know, you can begin to think of what yep. the tactics might look like. Um, and all of a sudden, there'll be regulatory dates built in that will follow the next session. So by the end of 2025, you'll probably start to get a pretty clear sense of what policy did they adopt on the clean heat standard and what dates will people no longer be able to buy certain types of equipment. Will that only apply to, in other words, existing equipment would be grandfathered or? That's a question of how long will be grandfathered. My guess is, since you always do it in Massachusetts, California does, and then we say we, we innovated it, if we didn't. Um, in both of those places, the first thing they did was set a date to mandate that you can't do any construction with anything fossil fuel in, in our residential property. Yeah. Um, that's usually yeah, that, so that'll yeah. probably come first. And then at some point, they'll get frustrated and they'll say, and by 2034, you know, um, you can't even sell one in Vermont, even for electric. Um, you know, um, I don't know what the date of 2034 is totally make, make the work, but there'll be some period of grandfathering. Uh, to get people ready. And then there'll still be people, to your point, though, who will say, well, you know, they'll have to drag me out of my house. Yeah. And I go, sure. You know, <laughs> so you'll probably, you'll never get to 100%. Yeah. But, you know, but those will, it's really going to be car uh, six, not carrots. You know, the carrots are going to be, make people feel less pain by the six. Yeah, who um, knows? <laughs> so, that's so. So that's when you that you know you're going to start seeing that play out with those three dates. Mm -hmm. So my comment was more around we have a unique population. You do. You need to be you will ask economic. So yep. we're going to have the slowest of all adoption rates on everything. Yep. So we need to make sure that our scenarios. Yep. Yeah. And you may be forced to do multiple, but because I did 100 percent. The state only made me do two scenarios, current and 100%. Others went in at like a 50%, and one at least got there, then got told to do six scenarios. <laughs> what are they supposed to build for? Well, then you have to pick the preferred scenario at the end okay. of dust, right? And John, let's can you be on the lookout for, um, for experts publishing? Yep. 
studies around this question of economic capacity. So, yeah, absolutely. It's, it's always much slower unless you're going to direct and solve. I mean, you know, you're going to change out everyone, everyone's heating unit and not charge them a penny. Um, you don't get adoption rates in depressed areas, uh, even if you put in steep incentives, you don't get very high adoption. Right. You get incentive if you do direct. So then that'll help inform us what scenario you think. Right. Okay. Exactly. Yeah, it's also it's also on transport. It's not it's not just the economics of it because yeah. prices are really low. We all if it's come way down in part because there a lot of people are finding that they're not really friendly in terms of traveling with them and yeah. and, and whatnot. And especially for people who live in rural areas where they travel large distances and where and where there's still a winter where the battery capacity yep. goes down. Um yep. no, I think that's all correct. So you let it all play out in there, and and frankly, the other thing you should expect is we'll have a big play in hardware. The legislature is also talking about in the, within the next few years adopting um, new caps on how much we can charge low and moderate income customers, um, and, and that would be very popular in the economic. Yeah, we've never talked about that with you, but that we modeled that out a little. Frankly, ridiculous. I know. Uh, the, the talk in Montpelier when I fly to here was was economically preposterous. It doesn't. Because they're, right. they're you know. so the people who can pay are in such a minority. The right. people who can't yeah. pay are in the majority. So and, and keep and in mind, if you change the economics, all the people of any affluence at all that were on the fence about solar will just go get solar and a battery and stop using our power. So you even narrow the people that can pay the bill, right? It's even worse than that. I, 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 I thought of that. The other, the other, the other problem is, is there's very little correlation historically between income and electricity usage. I know. Um, and um, so unless it's, unless, When I was interviewed in Commonwealth Edison in 1970, X. Seven. <laughs> I started working in 78, but it was in 77. Um, and I was asked what I thought about, as an economist, what I thought about lifeline rates, which is what the state's okay. talking about. Exactly right. And all the analysis then, it, 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 you know, if it, 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 there are, you want to redistribute income, redistribute income through a progressive income tax. Yeah. Don't do it through yeah. electric rates. Don't do it through you know, property tax. Or, or do it in a broad enough pool. In a broad yeah. enough pool. <laughs> but, but even then, it should, so should it be through electric yeah. rates. Yeah. But, but, but if, 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 if it's going to happen, and, and the thing is, you get sometimes the groups who are advocating for this are people who represent low income consumers and they don't understand that they're not maybe not their members, but their their constituency yeah. Yeah. doesn't isn't yeah. going to benefit from it. Right. You know, the big chunks of it won't benefit from it. Um and will be hurt by it. And um yeah, it, it's yep. So that's coming at us. Yeah. You know, and again, yeah. it goes back to the California Massachusetts thing. California passed this two years ago. And it was it was, it was entered into legislation this year and sat on the wall because there was other things in the way of it. So it'll be back next year and it'll be back with more fervor as people are organizing around it. So it gets back to your point earlier, Roger, about you know, there's a belief that you can do all things on, on electric rates, that it's like an endless pool that will solve societal problems. I, I have no problem with people that have the folks with the least of it in society. I believe in that. But how do you do it? Right? Um, this is not we don't we are we are not the income police. We don't know your income. We shouldn't know your shouldn't income. Know We're an electric utility. So to me, this is the it's just a a, a means of convenience. To accomplish the goal yeah. rather than the right way to accomplish the goal. In Northern Illinois, we actually got the state to take income tax data and it was done in a blind way that matched customers with their income tax and their electricity. 
So that's why I'm saying it was no correlation. No, exactly. Mm -hmm. so, um, there's two other items that weren't in the um, general manager's report um, that, that happened since. Uh, first, is we had the annual speech with UPSA today, so I just wanted to give you a heads up on that. I noted that was in the report. Um, you know, they every, we go everything from vision and mission all the way down to strategy, and then uh, tomorrow the UPSA staff will build action plans for the coming year. So, you know, the sorts of things that um, you've all been enduring the past you know number of months um, were heavy on everyone's head because in the last year we've had Barton and Jacksonville and Orleans. And you all, um, and I think there's one more that have had these big changes and are struggling with a whole lot of things around public power. Um, so it's mostly just to let you know, A, you're not alone in some of these struggles. And, and B, you know, that's really spent probably two hours today talking about, you know, when these happen, they're always unexpected. How can VEPSA be more ready to catch, right? Um, if you will. And uh, uh, we didn't come up with any solutions today, but we, we definitely fit these things in the in the in the in the goals for the coming year to kind of build out more mechanisms to have the tired managers at the ready. You know, right. to even pre-screen the VLC team list of interim town and city managers that are available who you don't have to be an electrical expert at least to be an interim. Right? Yeah. You need to know how to yeah. run something. And you can be a, for, for three, four, five, six months, you can be agnostic to what you're managing. Yep. You just come in and manage and make sure that the trains run on time, right? Um, so that's just some of what we talked about. But I wanted to let you know that, you know, one, that you're not alone, and two, that um, Vefs is rallying on that. Um, we got some updates on the, the current efforts to develop a technology roadmap for all the units um, because the state's forcing that. That will be a component, big component of the next time of the um, they've got a consultant working on the development of a technology roadmap. You know, um, some of which we may all have to do alone, and some of which we all may band together. Like we've been talking about we all need a big expensive SCADA system, or could we have a vessel SCADA system we all have access to to see our part of the system and manage our part of the grid, right? So, all those kind of things, right? right. Um, and you could be for speaking for hard while you're speaking for hard with electricity, just be. Be a proponent of more than just of that's of thinking of itself yep. as more than just advisory. So we kind of advisory a little bit. Is there a way for that to reinvent itself the way we need it? Right. Absolutely. And we've talked a lot about that today. It was historically it's been this all or nothing model where they'll come up with solution that everybody can subscribe to and we'll buy on kind of behalf of the U15 unions and then Orleans on behalf of the sort of the Northeast Kingdom unions, we both, both are kind of saying like we've got you've got to be able to support collaborations with every type of human unions, um, whether it be with right. in or technology or one uni going right. on their own because they need to. And that that resonated pretty loud. Right. Um, but otherwise, I think I think every one of us, one by one, we've got to work one of the yeah, and as you know, my view is that it's going to be tough to do that, even if we have a high functioning website. Um, so, um, but um, so, and I guess the other thing I just would say is, you know, and you should definitely have a longer term conversation to make sure you're always engaged with the union and particularly with website. But you know, I think the value proposition remains incredibly strong. Like the, the suite of skill sets they bring to the table, which we need like, you know, eight or 10 hours a, a week or a month of each one. Right. So we could never hire it all those. Yeah. You know, when you peel out, I don't know your number, but, and I should ask that for it sometime, but when you peel out like power supply and, and those sort of big things that drive all the costs, you know, you get six, eight, 10, 12 services for like 200 grand. Like that's like two well, slots. So you're a neighbor to sell. Will ask you a politically sensitive question. <laughs> yeah. Do you think it has worked out favorably for them? I think it is not. I think they have a whole lot of staff and their, their rates are really high as a result. And and they're always trying to find and they're, and they're much, much bigger than but the only reason they can afford it is because I forget their numbers, but if you're like 90, 10 residential commercial, they're like 20, 80. 
Well, some, some of their commercial, some of their commercial approaches industrial. I mean, That's snow right. making. And yeah. So they have huge rate base. So like they don't have any more meters than we have in, in the more so or hardly. Oh, but but they are they are, big but they are five extra feet, four extra feet, feet, four to five four to five times a feet. I was gonna say I think they're they're twenty one megawatts. I think they're twenty one megawatt feet and they're really less than seven. five and a half or one. Are you seven? seven? So they're way bigger as a result. Okay. And they're still they're always they're now always trying to approach depths of the sea how so can we work with you on this? Without <laughs> paying, right? And um, yeah. so it's it's a struggle. Yeah. It, you know, I think I think it's hard for them. I really do. And so I I remain. Yeah, I think our sentiment is rather than being more independent. Well, and I think what you mentioned, you know, you mentioned in discussion, you know, the, when you speak of the the group fifteen units yeah. that that. We should be looking yeah. at, at things that we can be doing, whether it's you know having a, some kind of an operating company or something. Yeah. Um, yep. And even implementation and technology. Yeah. Yeah. All kinds of all kinds of things. all kinds of things. There's all kinds of things we can do along that front. We need to do things like that and have a really strong depth on, and then. Our value proposition will be that we're doing all, we're keeping up with all the state policy, whether you think it's craziness or the most important thing ever, and everyone will have a different view. And our value proposition is we'll be doing that cheaper than the co-ops and GMP. Good. Um, and that's really what, Good. That's that's what we're, we're not going to be as cheap as we are today. I think, I'll tell you what, we, we saw the proposals about power supply that are coming, being driven by policy, about transmission costs from ice and wind and FERC. And capacity costs and it's a steep incline like we're going to be paying a lot more but so is every utility in state that, 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 that does provide government relations yeah. services but they don't provide a hell of a lot of communication we talked to, that's one of the strategies for this coming year and goals too. we talked about not that just is, that's the natural uh, we, we, we felt like we were always struggling I mean, yeah, the other thing is with all of these legislative things, and I know that that's the lobbies, but what, what that doesn't do, and what we don't do, because a lot of times we hear about things kind of late in the process, is mobilizing People, because I right. find it difficult to believe that most of our ratepayers and most of the voters in the towns will be served. And I suspect this applies to a lot of them. Is really want some of the stuff that's right. being proposed. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and, and, and and they want information. Yeah. You're saying yes, they want it, or yes, we're. Yeah, we're uh, I think. I think. People want information. What what Washington Electric does with their newspaper, where they where they communicate a lot. I think feeds a lot of appetite. Even the people who will be the last to adopt, they don't want to be the last to know. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, I'm not even talking about adopting. I'm talking about, for example, this thing with lifelines, which is getting very little publicity. Right. Okay. It and it should, and it should, yeah. and and you know, the select board should be talking about. This. They should be out there. The greatest yeah. source like yeah. everybody should be involved in this in this process. You know, if, if that's what people want, you know, and that's then you know, yeah, be well informed. Yeah. That's that that you know, the fact that some of us may think that that's not the way to go is too bad, but. But at least let people know what's going on because um, it's going to it's going to have an adverse effect on a lot of people. Yeah. We're building that pretty that capacity pretty hard in most and and that's what we'll see with some of the content. But you know we're 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 probably four to six months away. But we're going to have the ability to do the blast digital newsletters, blast alerts, blast text messages. Whatever we want to blast, we're going to be able to send it right to our CIS. 
Um, I don't know if our if your CIS has a module for that, probably does. I mean, cost something to enable that module. It's not free. I don't know what it is in this module or if you already have it. Um, but the point is, this capacity is there and you right. can get this information out to people. I know one of the one of the reasons we got on it was frankly last year's flood in Northville when we had do not drink orders on our water system. Like we we're like putting the information on front porch playing the Facebook because we didn't have any other way. Well, particularly lower income people don't always have access to the internet. Yeah. And so they were all complaining, like, well, why didn't you call me? I have I, I have a phone so you can text me or call me. That's all I got. And you're like, well, we don't have any way to do that. You know, and we started looking, we're like, oh, there's a module in our CIS that actually can do that. And they have all kinds of free built content in there already that you can then just use. Again, I'm sure this one does too. Um, so that's something we can evaluate for hard work. What's it cost and is it worth opening that up? Um, um, I've actually um, started that process. Um, we just need, I needed to do some yeah. fine tuning with exactly how it works. Yeah. We can, um, and narrow it down if however we've got the the date in the system whether it's by their cycle or their address or whatever if we want to focus it as long as we've got that particular piece of data in the system we can focus messages to those certain peoples or we can text people and stuff yeah it will be a text so this can all come come along and again that's the can help push all this right so um, the other piece, which I'm guessing you're probably interested in, is the flood and how we did. And you know we didn't do well. Um, we don't have any sort of even solid estimates yet. Let me just say that first. Um, if you break us up into two um, buckets, if you will, one is how did our electric grid do, and two is how did our hydro do. Um, on the electric system, I would say ish, 100,000. It's hard to say. Um, I'm to say right now. Our met, you know, we've got broken poles in the middle of bridges that don't, don't exist anymore. Um, you know, and a lot of kind of you know temporary ways to get people power because there's no way to get it to them permanently, so we're not even done. And we don't know okay. if something got washed away so bad that you know we now have to rerun a whole street and a half to mitigate and go a different direction. Like you don't know that stuff yet, but yep. just what we can see. It wouldn't surprise me if we had a hundred thousand dollars worth of damage on the grid. And then on the hydro, um, so I'll start by saying as it is in the report that we our contractor just gotten the hydro unit back into the local dam. Um, there is six inches, six inches of mud, four to six inches of mud, mud yeah. on the floor, uh, which means the, the, the whole unit is taking mud again. Um, and so I'm sure that unit is going to have to be taken back out of the hole. Um, it's at least going to be have to be cleaned and resurfaced and re-greased before it gets put back in. Um, and then it has to get put back in. So best case, let's say it's you know, 30 to 50 grand just for that. Worst case, it has to get rebuilt again, and it's 100 or 200 grand to do that. Yeah, um, it's going to be expected. Yeah, and they're already coming up to do that. In fact, they're either here today or they're coming tomorrow. I forget which day they were coming. The second piece, it became clear when Beth and I and Brian went out and looked <laughs> that um, our pen stock floated. One of the few pen stock floated, um, which is never a good thing. That partly due, it's it is due to the fact that we weren't generating um, because the pen stock was empty, and even if a, a steel boat will float. So it will steal pen stock if it's empty. Um, so one is never good if that floats because that pen stock is not brand new. So it could be brittle. So they're gonna we're gonna get an inspection of the whole length inside and out. Um, secondly, when it's set back down, and this is how we know it floated, because obviously we didn't see it. Um, it's not sitting on one of the saddles that it sits, it sits in these concrete saddles. And the dirt's all gone, it used to be on top of it. That's what, and then it floated back to that, obviously. So what happened is it floated, a big piece of ledge stood under it. And then when it set back down, it's sitting on that ledge instead of the saddle. So if there's no cracks, you know, we can get a big crane in there and rigging it's going to be really tricky because if you rig it in one point, you're probably going to break it. So it's going to, you're going to have to have an expert rigger, um, which we've got some in the region, so that's good. Um, if we're lucky, you pick it up, you know, a half an inch, you slide that piece of ledge back out, you drop it back down, and it sits in the saddle, 
and the inspectors say everything's cool and there's no more damage. Um, so that could be anything from 10 or 15 grand to God knows, depending on how much the repair of a pen stock is, that could be hundreds of thousands of dollars. Probably isn't, but you know, it's probably less than a hundred. So the pen stock could be, you know, hundred, hundred, a hundred thousand, and it could be five hundred thousand. Um, but it's not nothing, and it's more time before we can restart the generator. And that's only what we could see when we were there. And the um, road's gone again. Road's, the road's gone, <laughs> absolutely gone. Um, so the space is gone. So sort of potentially provocative question that I'd recommend. You. We ask now, which is, you know, with climate change causing yep. more intense storms and flooding, and given the positioning of our hydro and its age, at a certain point, we need to make a, yep. a sort of risk. Is it worth it? Yeah. Because <laughs> if it saves us $180,000 or $200,000 a year, yep. we purchase, there's a, there's a finite amount of money we, we can justify. When previously it was, oh, that was a 100 year flood. And so, shoot, yeah. it's definitely worth getting to that safe and free. Well, if this is, um, this is going to be more regular. Yeah. Well, it's also a question of what are there things that we can be doing right. so that um, we don't have the same kind of problems with what's going on. Yeah. With, yeah. with the changes. But it's in regulation. Can we build some resilience in that right. we haven't worried about? The but implicit in what I'm saying is, yeah, it's, it's, it's sort of, but it's it's kind of armor proof, armor plating, something that might be ill sighted, you know. Yep. Yeah. Well, yeah. You know, you, I mean, the other thing is when we talk about the savings, I mean, the savings now are less than what the savings will be as costs of the energy off because it's the alternative still off. Particularly the cost of peak power. And, and, and also the say the cost of transmission, yep. which is, you know, it's, it's, yep. it's, it's, it's inside. So there's, it's, there's one potential mitigation project, particularly if we get FEMA to pay for, is worth evaluating. Um, immediately downstream of the dam itself, I don't know, 50, 70 yards downstream, there, and there's a place where the natural channel runs, and there's actually a wing wall on top of it. Um, and on the back side of the wing wall is where the penstock emerges and goes down to the generating station itself. Um, it struck me when we were out there looking at it that if that wing wall was, I don't know, 10 feet taller, would it force the water more so in its channel, which would keep it away both from the generating station and the penstock? Mm -hmm. And if, if it Capital investment of that sort could essentially channelize that water and keep it flowing. Um, it might be well worth looking at. And with all the damages you've now had twice, you know, you, you know, you probably um, their EV multipliers. You take the damages and you multiply by two, and that's your first test of whether they pay 100%. You can pay to that difference. But after this one, you could be close to a million dollars in damages, so you could do a two million dollar project. I bet you, yeah, you could have, not, uh, not, still may not make sense. I would say you start you get over a million dollars price tag repairables. You start to the closest to the uh, yeah. So I get that. Yeah. Yep. And I don't know like how much it costs to send that when you all that's some of the stuff you got to look at. They don't know. Yeah, or, or the mitigation paid for. Well, that was that was that was yeah. my yeah. question. Is is where are we with FEMA on this flood? Have we have, has been been there's there's been no disaster? So is they're so, collecting. So they're still collecting information. Yeah. It seems to me that the disaster declaration came through faster. It did. I think it did. But it did. I mean, I think the disaster declaration is pretty much immediate. So again, should we be talking to our senators and congressperson and they say all, we need this, we need yeah. this. They've you know, already made public announcements that they that they're gonna push to get declarations. So this is sitting in the governor's office. That's where it's sitting right now. He needs to make his decision and then FEMA comes up and reviews his decision. Can he decide? 
He's my guess, if I was to guess, because this is they got bit by this the last time a bit, where they declared in like I forget the members eight counts, right? So it's not a just take that yeah. number. Yeah, and everything got running down the road. And like three weeks later, there's, there's two or three more, time. there's two or three yeah. more counties going, what the heck? Yep. But they couldn't seem to get anyone's attention because everyone was working on the eight. So I'm guessing that out of prudence, they're going slower to try to make sure how many counties meet that $1.2 million threshold, which is ish what the threshold usually is county by county. Is, is Caledonia? Caledonia must be on I would mean, imagine. I don't. But but yeah, that's, that's a, well. If we're looking at the possibility of a million dollars damage to Woolpit, yep. which is I guess technically in Moyle County, it is. Yep. Um, Many most of your grid is in Caledonia. But the grid is in yeah, Caledonia. Yes. But I'm thinking about other people. I mean, all the stuff that happened in Lindenville and, and just, whatnot. Just from what I've seen from the tour that Beth and I took, like in our service territory, just on the bridges and highways. They can probably move that number. On my, on my <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know if it goes to, I mean, it, it's, it's and, worse than it was. And last so, year. so alone is going to need it for Memorial. And then it's between oh. Stowe and Johnson. So, we'll get will be included in this point. So, Memorial's not, I can't bother Memorial get, doesn't get declared. Caledonia's yeah. got to get declared. You start moving up in the oil range, we're going to have a little service there. But how do you make sure that they're on the list? Then what we have to do, and I've got to get with um, Beth tomorrow before she leaves, we got to, we got to basically send word probably through the RPCs on um, our kind of ish estimates so that that flows downstream. Usually they contact us know, they to get the estimates, but, but we can go ahead, we can initiate it. We'll it I know fast. who to contact. Sure. We're on the list yep. so that we, you know, we get the disaster declaration because then the cost is not going to be yep. the same magnitude, even if it doesn't cover everything. Yep. We're we're in a different. And do we still need to initiate the hard look of within the new model at what point? Because our well, I mean, some of that may be part of the IRP process. I mean. yep. Are you definitely mm -hmm. look at it there. Yeah, yep. absolutely. Um, yeah. But. Some of it, I mean, well, you know, to actually come up with the conclusion is going to depend on, you know, getting people in with expertise to make do analysis yep. and stuff. And that costs money. Yep. So, yep. so it, it's tough to swallow. Um, you know, the same day two years in a row. Yeah. Off the soil, and you know, and I, my, alone. <laughs> and my view is always, and it sounds weird probably, but from my perspective, it's like for us, we got to rebuild stuff, it's what we do, right? We are an electric department, we rebuild stuff. I always am much more heartfelt for the individuals who are now going through this for the second time in a row, they just want to live their lives, it's not what their purpose is, right? So you know, well, we should feel bad for hunting the electric. We can have our own little bit party once in a while if we need it. Um, but, you know, from a public perspective, it's all about all the four people who are just living through devastation two yep. years in a row. It's horrible. Good. Financial. Oh, financial. Yeah, financial report. Does anyone have any questions on the financial report? I do want to point out a couple of things um, on the cash flow that reflects uh, 414000 that we got from VLCT insurance for the year ago disaster. So that kind of inflated the cash flow, but that money is not obligated to be repaid to anybody. That's our money okay. to keep. Um, and even without that, just in normal operations, we were up 25000 in cash. Um, and the other thing I wanted to mention is, I don't know how closely you look at each account number, but we have actually been accounting for vacation and sick leave in, as people take it incorrectly. We've been charging it to a 926 account. It's not supposed to go there. It's supposed to be spread under all the labor accounts. So the overall number 
for it's not going to affect overall our budgeted numbers. It's just redistributed out of the nine two nine twenty six accounts into the where people are actually charging their time. That's according to FERC rules. Then FERC rules on that stuff is um, yeah, just when we do our budget, it's so hard to figure out what. What? This is actually going to make my part of the compensation budget easier, okay. not putting it in there. Good, good. The only thing I would add on the financial report, just because it didn't show up anywhere else in the financial aid, is we had notified BEPSA because we knew that the plan was that later this year to do a rate increase. So we've gotten hard work in line. Um, of course, that all comes out of the analysis based on our, our test year and all that. But um, uh, Steve Farman told me today, probably November is when they would get to us to do that evaluation. And um, so that's what I think it looks like. But just wanted you to be aware that if you have to get in line for that. We've got, <laughs> we've got every meeting, trying to do the same thing. We're all in the same financial shape. So. And, that, and, and I told Scott that that was something that Mike had discussed with yeah. the board yes. before he left hold another rate increase. Yeah. As we get closer, if you're looking at the finances and you're like, hey, we're on enough cash, we don't want to do it right now, we can always pull out. It's not a big deal. It just held a place in line for us because they're working that far in advance on these things. So, well, I think it's yeah, it is, unfortunately. <laughs> so, we're just here aware of that. I think it's useful. Um, one, I saw the consolidated charges for the internet, um, just with note. I worked with the library, the, um, the statewide library network of Phoenix Sunset, and I helped them um, get plugged in with the NEKCUD. Now uh, there is fiber service at the library through the CUD. Physically, I think the infrastructure passes the office if we ever want to consider switching. I can't speak to cost or anything else, but that's one we know that the option is there. Wow. Where, where do we get them? Who's our internet provider now? Consolidated. Consolidated. It's, they're not just internet, they're also the uh, phones. So I, I had mentioned to you the possibility of looking at a new voice over IP phone system. Yeah. Oh, the phone. <laughs> yeah. Consolidated has its challenges, yeah. shall we say. Yeah. Um, but he's right, right. It's sitting right here now. Yeah. <laughs> but actually, our phones are managed by not consolidated. I mean, the actual, like, the physical phones that we have in the software, they're managed by somebody else. And it's a lady out of Elmore. I can't remember her name. Yeah. Um, you know, my, my impression is that. Krista is excited to talk about innovation in the future. Um, you know, Scott worked with it previously, and whether it's voice or anything else, I think we have a um, go better partner out there. So, yep. for whatever we want. Thank you. <laughs> and I, it's worth noting since you mentioned that, like, there's Krista's great credit, like, as I think you all know. Finding a tree cutting company that's willing to kind of come in is really difficult. And so they've been really trying to meet a deadline here. So we work with Krista to consider a different route in rather than the one that was no way going to be cut in time for them. And to her credit, they shifted on the fly and got, got the fiber here. Oh, they, they it, it, it was really great to yeah. give them some credit where credit's due. Yep. yep. Other question, um, what is the so that's a BEPSA project is one of those that you sign on to. Mm -hmm. So it really it's a it's for a outage management system. So the base of the outage management is getting a, a whole system in the GIS map. I couldn't tell you today if it's if we're already there or not. BEPSA has been going through one utility after another. Mm -hmm. Everyone's getting core GIS with that you're at.
to our our, our GIS system. Rebooting. And and once we have AMI, that AMI system will talk to the outage management and it will automatically populate, it won't take CRC, it will automatically populate everything that's out in the system. And our guys can clear the outages right in the field on the tablets. And I mean that so that that's what that whole initiative is about is to get us the operational efficiency to really be able to to deal with, with um, outages and also that just a good GIS system that really has our everything from asset management because again you put earthquakes in it um, for the equipment so you have the, yep. the age when you put the lot when the lot inspection in is you can upload pictures of the condition of the poles you know you can put everything into that system and it's all tagged to a GIS location great so really useful yeah my understanding it'll, is it'll that the, the lack of Full data available currently is hamstring our CV and others. So I guess to the extent it's mm -hmm. possible that yep. data can be leveraged across purposes yep. for our ratepayers who benefit from yep. all these things. Yep. The only thing we need for that is because we you know there's there's both um uh, not cyber, but there's terrorism concerns, and so it doesn't become publicly available. Yep. And if the CUD wants access to it, they have to agree to keep it private. Mm -hmm. They can't sell the data, they can't show the data. Yep. Um, even though you can look on Google Maps and get it generally, yep. it has so much less robust information in it, you know, what you can get on, on Google. Yep. Um, so there is a necessity to get them to sign an agreement about the intended uses of, of allowing them to have the data yeah. that most utilities require, and I would recommend we require for sure once you have it. And when you think of our, when you think of our, right now, for the last couple of decades, it's been what's in the Brian's head. Exactly. And whenever Brian was hired, it would be really good. We have to have it. Yeah. Just got to have What it. do you do without Brian's head? I know. It's got to get into that GIS. We had to drive 40 yeah. minutes. Don't go find out what things going to be exactly right. It just has to happen. And I don't know, it, it could be a lot of utilities um didn't even realize um that that's had already done their community and it was sitting there waiting for them to use. So I haven't asked, I need to ask about what's the status of the GIS effort here in Harvard. Yep. Um I don't know if we're on the docket to be done like next or next after next, or if we were already done and we just don't know. And we don't know how to use Empire, mm -hmm. which is also a mess again. When I got the North Star, when I got the North Star, I heard, well, it's all set, it's all there. Um, the key guy, the key staff person that knew how to use it left two years ago, so we haven't done anything with it. So I paid Empire to come to North Star and teach not one person, they taught the whole crew how to use it. <laughs> so right. everybody knows how to yes. use it, you know? So we'll never have that problem again. So. Yeah. Anything else on the board? Uh, I would like to move that we go into executive session to discuss a confidential customer matter. Is that a second? Okay, it is. I'm waiting for you to say oh, time okay. and then I'll stop it. <laughs> it is 12. <clears throat> Good. Minus five forty-three. We are out of executive session. No action was taken. No five fifty-three. Sorry. Um. And I would like to move that we go into executive session to discuss uh, an HR matter. It is five fifty-four. And we are in the executive session. And six point two three. And we are on executive session. Is there any other business? Oh, yes. Oh, I was supposed to put a nice in, but it's a right now. The question is 
do we want to keep having our meetings at four o'clock? I remember that that was an issue for you. Yeah, five o'clock is fantastic. Uh, yeah. And it's an issue for me as I, I just trying to decide whether the slide was left for a real number, mm -hmm. which I decided I'm going to leave. And I stressed to them that I'm having increasing struggles now. I'm having to cancel a lot of mm -hmm. and it's putting it in the back of it. Yep. So the problem for me is that five is a little bit better, but I'm not going to leave. I'm happy to go later. I apologize for you guys. But Morris will meet to 5 30. We don't have a bunch of family at home. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. So I thought meet at six. Yep. Um, that would, that makes it much easier for me. That would, that would be yeah. a great life improvement. Yeah. Mike, how are you on that time is question? Like, it, for you, is four o'clock better than six o'clock? Or, <laughs> well, four is better than six, five is better than either. And I'll do anyone later than four as long as Lynn brings bagels. I can't, I, <laughs> he wants you to bring bagels as long as it's after four. <laughs> it's about damn time. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, we do. Days when everybody else is off, and yes. they suddenly have this meeting, which yep. is real. Yeah, well, this is a lengthy discussion. Yeah. <laughs> Multiple improvements. So, so I, I would even suggest Tuesday. So, yeah. Sometimes I have to travel, but I'll just I'll try to work on travel so I'm not going to use it. But, yeah, yeah, I mean, that's but, I think it might be great times, times. but at least if we get rid of the holidays and we start at six. And if it is on to this, I am happy to bring it over. I'll bring pensions too. This is getting better. We'll have to commission me something. Yeah, we don't need it, but some other. I'll do it. Only other thing I suggest you think about. Um, I, I love the fact that you manage this place by meeting once a month. Um, and when you bring a new manager on, um, you either should think about for the first three to six months meeting a bit more or selecting a couple of you to have a meeting in the off month with the manager to support them. Okay. Um, just something to be there more frequently for the manager, um, you know, in, in the off cycles. Um, I have to think once a month is really the we right. Comply? Could we comply with the requirements of one of them? We can all be remote. We just have to, somebody has to be here live with the public. In the place right. with the public yeah. So you are the same way you're on my request. You know, and I don't, again, I think it's very short term and it doesn't even have to be all of you. You could also appoint Good. an ad hoc committee of two. Um, or make it even rotate. Yeah, or or I just, rotate. You know, I just think that person, if you want, if well, you want, if, if, to right. Right. if you want to position the person for success, a little more touch with you, but whoever you're going to hire is not going to know hard work. Or, Let or, me put it that way. Right. Or, uh, as a recent appointee, I can say something doctor more flexible than that, too. If it, sure. if it is pre meeting calls, but the appointed yep. person, but I mean, yep. I mean, more tough ones are a great idea, but certainly I, I think it can be shorter. Well, yeah. However, it works. I just think a lot of okay. times what you get is a manager who thinks you're supposed to know everything. Mm -hmm. Is if it's not something that you've structured, is going to be reluctant to call you. Yeah. yeah. So they're trying to prove that they're brand new, they're trying mm -hmm. to prove themselves, right? Yeah. And we would wish that they wouldn't do it. Yeah. We would yeah. wish yeah. they would yeah. have more emotional intelligence yeah. and tell you I'm, I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm drowning. Very fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know. So just, there's no, no right way to do it. If, if you all just think about that no. between now and when you make so a lot. Are we switching our time to 6 p.m. on Tuesday, please? I'm sure you think they're going to be The third Tuesday. I moved to the switch the meeting the third to Tuesday. Yes. the third Tuesday of each month at 6 p.m. Starting in August. It'll be August 20th, I believe, right? That's the question. Okay. Okay. Is there a second? 
So oh, second. 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 No, I I've, I've uh, any further I've, discussion? Yep. Um all in favor? Aye. Okay. Excellent. So I need to change the thing on the website just to know the regular meeting rooms. And yes, ma'am. I don't know if there are any other requirements about announcing. Let me remind you, we need to put something on the website about the new open meeting law. That was a requirement in the law. Oh, okay. So you and I will talk about that tomorrow. Um, I don't know you have to read that. Or something. Uh, is there something? Is there nothing? Any objection? Hearing none, we are adjourned at 6 p.m.